Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to the beautiful Mocho Guzzi Mandelo or the Nelson as I like to call it. I've had this bike for a week now from Wheels Motorcycles so first of all massive massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this machine. This is their demonstrator give them a call if you want to ride it but I've been enjoying this machine for the last week. I did a first ride on this bike week before last I'll put a link to the video at the top there but this in this video I'm going to go through everything I've learned about this machine during the week of ownership so um, I've got a few comments and a few views on this bike and I'm going to tell you five fantastic things with this bike and I'm also going to tell you five things which I'm not so keen on so if that sounds of interest go and get yourself something warm to drink and I'll be right back after the intro Jop Z roll it this bike out last time the roads were it was about two or three degrees the bike was saying it was eight degrees but that was absolute nonsense it was nowhere near eight degrees it says it's nine degrees today it was about three degrees last time I went out there was ice on the roads the roads were wet you know they were covered in salt things have dried out a little bit since then I'm very very pleased to say because now we have some sort of dry roads. It's still cold today. I'm not going to be able to do much with this bike. But at least I'm hoping we can give it a little bit of a tickle today and see what that handling is like. Because, you know, even on the launch of this bike in Italy, I think it rained. <laughs> when they went all the way to Italy and tested bikes in the rain. They could have done that in the UK. But um, today we've got semi-dry roads. So we'll see how this bike handles initially there initially there there's a little the suspension is quite soft i thought the suspension was going to be really firm i mean it, you know the front forks are a little bit harsh you know at slower speed the bump management they do they're, they're not the smoothest of rides on this standard bike let's just be clear this is the standard version without the electronic suspension so i don't know what that electronic suspension the olin's kit is like it's probably very very good but uh, for the standard bike, there's a little bit of, uh, we'll see, we'll, get, we'll chuck it around a bit more in a minute, but there's a little bit of wallow coming through that section. And there's also, I've noticed it's quite a firm ride as well. So, hmm, let's see. The bike weighs 230 kilos. You know, it's a sports tourer. It's actually uh, 10 kilos lighter than the BMW R1250 RS. Now I'm going to come back to that bike a little bit because I think that bike is the closest competitor to this machine, what with the engine layout and everything, you know. So um, I'm going to do a few comparisons with that bike, but it's 10 kilos lighter than the BMW. The BMW is a bit more grunty though, with another sort of 15 horsepower and then sort of another 20 or 15 newton meters of torque. So the BMW is a little bit more grunty. But saying that, I think this engine also feels a little bit more raw than the BMW engine. I think the BMW Boxer Twin feels a little bit more refined. In the first ride video, I've spoken about sort of riding position and I touched on the fact that, you know, it's a little bit tight in the leg. I'm six foot two. Well, you know, I've been out a few times on this now and I've not really noticed any discomfort from the leg position. Another thing with being a bit taller, it does mean your knees are closer to the cylinders. The cylinders are right, I can fit two fingers between my knees and the cylinders. So I'm six foot two. If you're any taller than six foot two, you may find your knees getting awfully close to those cylinders. The good news is the seat is quite long, so you've got a lot of option to move back and forward. But I'm sort of sat right back now, right back I can get two and a half fingers between the cylinders also with the cylinders being so close to you you might think you get a lot of heat off of the engine well in the conditions I've been riding this bike in I have not noticed that but I'd imagine if you're riding it in 30 degrees 
you're going to get some engine heat off those cylinders. It's, it's unavoidable. As much as I love the Nelson, there are some things I don't like about it. I've picked out five dislikes or five niggles, let's call them, that I've noticed with this bike in the time I've been riding it. Check these out. Now these are in no particular order, but the first thing is the luggage for this bike. Obviously you've got lovely little integrated pieces here to plug your luggage into, but the lower luggage mount is actually on the rear tail. So that means I think it would be a hell of a job to actually fit a tail tidy to this bike, because if you lose this, you're gonna lose your secondary luggage mount. So unless a company comes out with a special tail tidy with this, which retains this luggage mount, that could be a problem. Another thing I'm not overly keen on is the dipstick filler on the left-hand side here. If we remove that, as you can see, it leaks oil. Oh my God, let's get that on quick. <laughs> oh God, what am I gonna do with that now? I've polluted, polluted the environment. But there, there we go. Remove the filler and you will spill oil. So that means the bike's gotta be on, it doesn't come with the center stand. So the bike's gotta be on a, on, a, on a paddock stand or someone's got so it might take two people to actually check the oil level is that right i can't believe that's right <sighs> i'm going to clean that up one thing to point out with that observation is this bike hasn't had its first service yet so it's still on the running in oil so perhaps when it's had its first service maybe it's a bit over full for those initial run in miles but that's what i've noticed mm. the switch gear on this bike is pulled directly off of the other um, Aprilia models, the other Paggio models. So that's exactly the same switch gear as what, what is on the RS660 Tuono, RSV4. These mirrors are directly off of the Tuono. So the switch gear is okay, it works very well, but Moto Guzzi's used to have some lovely switch gear to them and uh, it just feels like a little bit of a, a cop out to chuck on the generic Piaggio switch gear. With a touring bike, you want easy filling of the fuel, don't you? On this machine, it's a little bit tricky. Like the Tuono and RSV4, which this could be the same fuel cap, there is a little lip on the filler inside, which just about fits the nozzle in. So it means when you're pumping the fuel in, you have to go very, very slowly or it will just spill and spray out. So I don't know why. Piaggio do this on our bike. I don't know if you can just see it in there, but there is a, a big lip here, which makes it really tricky to fill and slow to fill the bike. So that can be a bit irritating, especially on a touring bike where you could be filling it up multiple times a day. Because they have used this generic switch gear, another slight annoyance is to raise the electrically operated screen. I mean, it's great that it's got an electric screen, so that's a very positive point, but you have to go in the menus to actually enable the, the screen usage. There you go, a couple of clicks across to the right and then up and down on the buttons to raise the screen up and down. Minor point, but it'd be nice just to have buttons just to raise the screen up and down. If they'd done dedicated switch gear for this bike, then they could have done that. The other bad thing, I'm gonna have to jump on the bike to show you. Let's go. When you put the cruise control on on this bike, when it's primed, ready to go, you get this flashing Oh, green light here and it looks like you've left your indicator on just make that a different color why has it got to be green then i will leave my indicators on because i think a green flashing light is my cruise control so those are the bad things let's move on to the positives and there's plenty of them it is unusual for a bike in this price range to have proper brembo master cylinders with your sample bottles you have the brake master cylinder with the lovely black levers, but you also have a clutch master cylinder with, again, adjustable black levers. It's quite unusual for a bike in this price range to have proper Brembo master cylinders. I love that. Another great thing about this bike is all the modes are fully adjustable. So you're not stuck with what the manufacturer wants you to have on their modes. So you can go in and adjust everything, including when your wings deploy so you know and you can change it on all of those modes so everything is fully customizable that is what we want the next good thing will take us under the seat under the rear pillion seat as you can see there's actually a little bit of room under here well relatively speaking for a new bike but we have a usb charger very nice as standard 
Yeah, the roads are uh, not great, are they? Let's just see how much grip we got. Yeah, not too bad actually. We we'll give it a little bit. One thing which is great with this engine, I know I seem to have started this video on a bit of a downer, don't know, I'm pointing out all the bad things, but the engine is very, very grunty and it's got instant, instant response. Absolutely instant response. It's a little bit vibey, slightly more vi vibey than that Boxer engine, as I mentioned last time, but you know, you can absolutely live with it. It's, it's not too vibey. You know, I, I've ridden a lot of other Guzzies and I can tell you, yeah, Ooh, I should have seen that road close there, look. Oh, geez, this is going to be one of these, uh, one of these videos, isn't it? Is this person broken down? Have you broken down? Oh no, what a nightmare. You, you almost made it. <laughs> uh, I'd offer to push you out, but... <laughs> is it, is it, how deep is it really quite deep then, is it, or? You don't think I'll get through? Oh, you've, cha you've challenged me now, haven't you? <laughs> Get through, come back yeah, I'll give you a push. I'll come I'll give you a push. Have you been able to call someone to come and yeah, no, save you? Waiting for the oh yeah, okay. All right, lovely stuff. Oh, so you're almost out, like you say, aren't you? Yes. It just started sputtering and then died together. Uh, we shouldn't have gone through it at 60 miles an hour. We shouldn't have gone through it at all. Right, no. The car in front went through, no problem. The little thing oh. went through. Okay, well I won't risk it then. Thanks very much anyway. I hope you're not waiting too long. I probably could have made it, but as it's not my bike, I better not risk it. I wouldn't risk it on my bike anyway. I'm even more likely to try on somebody else's. Shh, don't tell wheels. So we're gonna have to go back the way we came, unfortunately. That's a shame, isn't it? It's a good bit of road that. We may have to seek out some other twisty roads, but I mean, it's all very wet anyway. But uh, I want to just confirm about that feeling of, of the wallowiness. So I'm going to put it back through those that twisty section I came up through. They're sort of moderately fast sort of uh, twisties and a bit undulating. So maybe that's where I was noticing that little bit of wallow maybe. But I don't want it to wallow this. It felt like it was going to be really sharp on the handling. So I'm going to be disappointed if it's a big old wallower. I'm hoping it's going to be... Uh, a bit more of a sporty side to it maybe that is why you need the you know the electronically adjustable suspended version so you can firm things up on the fly oh there's loads of grunt from that engine i do even though i've moaned a bit about this engine i do love it i do absolutely love it i mean this bike it doesn't really and this is going to sound like a bit of a criticism again but it's almost too good to be a guzzy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, they're, they're never, you know, they, they do handle quite well, but there's always, you know, they're, they're sort of very basic bikes, aren't they? Very basic bikes. I know some of the big cruisers, you know, are obviously quite expensive and stuff, but they're not sophisticated machines. And there's always a lot of vibes, you know, and you just, you just go along with that because that is what you buy, you know, that is, that is character. But with a new bike like this, I don't know, I, if, if, I, if it didn't have any guzzy badging on it, I'm not sure I'd know it was a motor guzzy. And that's a little bit of a shame, I think. Am I just being too darn critical today? If I've got nothing good to say, if I've got nothing good to say, say nothing. That's what my mum taught me. A spin up there it's got the full aids this bike which is nice you know i mean modern bikes need to have aids you know <laughs> okay so this is our fast little undulating bit of road let's let's try a little bit of moderate speed down here see how she feels yeah it's a bit bouncy a little bit bouncy. I'll be very interested to see, you know, it's quite harsh as well, there's a little bit of harshness there. 
and a little bit of bounce but you know it's a sports tourer I guess but I, I'm wondering whether you really need to go for the S version and get that Olin suspension because the Olin's is the EC2 system which is the latest Olin's um, and you've got a comfort mode so it will soften it will harden I think it auto sets preload as well you know if you've got pillions and luggage and stuff and the S version of this bike is only an extra 2,000 just over 2,000 pounds which you know is a bargain <laughs> when you're getting that Olin, full Olin suspension and it's even got a remote preload adjuster on the Olins as as has the, the, the shock on this bike as well plus you get the quick shifter which I'm not sure how well that would work on this bike if I'm being completely honest because the gearbox it's a very sort of precise slow sort of sort of quite long throw sort of gear but it's a gearbox where you take your time with and I'm not sure a quick shifter would work particularly well with it don't know haven't tried it but that, that's sort of the feeling I'm getting and you also get the heated grips as standard on the S model just for another couple of grand so it's pretty good value the S you know and it's 15.7 I think the S version this is 13.7 so if this is all you can afford then fine but I think there could be some I'm pulling around second gear that's how much grunt this bike's got that was second but I think you know I think you could find the limits of this suspension possibly depending how you ride the conditions aren't great for testing handling anyway so <laughs> it does get a little bit bouncy that is a bouncy bit of road mind but uh, yeah you, I can't really test the suspension in these conditions afternoon sir because you know it's too cold it's too damp it's not it's not the conditions to be chucking a bike round and really leaning it over sounds brilliant one of the things I do love about this bike is the sound of it I don't know how Italians make their standard bikes sound so good. I don't know why, why you know, everybody else, Japanese specifically, struggle to make their bikes sound decent under the Euro emissions, where the Italians, they just bring them out and they sound brilliant. It's not even got too big an exhaust on this bike. You know, it's sensible sized. You could live with it, but they just make beautiful noises. And this one is no exception. Don't know how they get away with it. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoa, wet bit. Wet bit. Crunch and forth. Oh, sounds wonderful. I've got it in sport mode and you can notice that. There's so much grunt there instantly on the throttle. That's really impressive, that pickup. I love it. Oh, low close. What's going on now? It's not another flood, is it? Oh dear, this one's shutting. Oh! Is it another flood? Yeah, this one's flooded as well. Look at that. I could make that. I could definitely make that. Jesus. There in Harry. So there we are. That is my follow-up video on the Motoguzzi V100 Mandela. I hope this video hasn't come across as a bit negative about the bike. Unfortunately, because of the conditions, you know, it makes it very difficult to put it through its paces and, and sort of test it properly. The bike sort of slides around a little bit. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting masses of feedback from these tires. I'm not sure what, I think it's got Pirelli GTs or something on it. They're not brilliant. They're not inspiring me with confidence either. So it could be the conditions, it could be the rubber, but I think I need to test this again. We need to compare this bike to that BMW and what I'll be doing in spring when BMW get their uh, 
the new allocation of the new R1250 RS. Me and Greg will do a comparison review with this bike, or maybe the S version. Maybe we'll try and get hold of the S version, because I suspect the BMW will come fully loaded as a press bike. So it's a little bit unfair to compare the fully loaded electronic suspension you know bmw against this base model hope you've enjoyed the video i haven't mentioned things like these wings i mentioned all that in the first video so go and check out my first ride if you want to know a little bit more about this bike because i've not covered everything in here because i don't want to just repeat myself so these videos should be viewed as a pair <laughs> all the best things comes in pair come in pairs don't they hands feet breasticles so there we are i hope you've enjoyed the video if you haven't already subscribed to my channel click below subscribe you won't miss that r1250 rs comparison review either i'm actually going to be riding the new r1250 rs out in spain <laughs> in march so uh, yeah i'm rather looking forward to a bit of spanish sunshine in march so uh, yes subscribe and i'll see you on the next video Cheers guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> it's bad boy. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. I've just dropped my H2. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Oh, Jesus! Listen to this. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh,